Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! Today we have a piece of walnut. This comes to us from our friend Tuffy Marginez. We're going to start off this piece somewhat unconventionally. The piece is about six inches tall, five inches by six inches on the top, six by seven and a half on the bottom. The top and the bottom are not parallel, so that's the unconventional part. I'll show you how I decided I'm going to solve that. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I want to keep the bark on the bottom, not necessarily on the top, so I don't want to take much away from the bottom. So I'm going to put the bottom simply against the jaws. Nothing else is going to hold it. No center in here, no woodworm screw, nothing. It's just going to sit there. And the reason for that is because I don't want to be pinned to a particular point. I just want to look over here and see when I feel like it's centered. Drive my live center in here somewhere. I think about there. I'm just going to plane off the top until it's parallel with the bottom. So here you can see how close the wood is to my finger. It's, it's missing the tool rest here by about an eighth of an inch. And then when I come around to this side, it's missing by about three quarters of an inch. So I just want this flat. And because this is the other end is now sitting flat against the jaws of the chuck, uh, that will bring it into parallel. And then I'll switch it back around, drill a hole up here for the woodworm screw, and we'll start working semi-normally. I hope this works. It seems like it shouldn't come out of there to me. I've got a good firm point here embedded into the wood and the other end setting against the flat top and I don't see how it could get cocked out of there and fly out. I just don't think so. I guess we'll find out. 540 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. That ought to do it. So now I'm just going to take it off the lathe, chisel off this little nub, find what I believe is the center of the top here, drill a hole for my woodworm screw, turn it around, mount it up to the chuck, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have it mounted up on the woodworm screw with tailstock support. I've marked out for a tenon. I've checked the bottom for flatness, and it is nice and flat. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the tenon in. I'll recess an area around here to make that tenon and I'm not going to put a typical base on here it's just going to set on these outside edges for that I'm going to use a half inch standard grind bowl gouge I'm going to get my mask and face shield on and we're going to be turning at 635 rpm Yeah, that should work. Now I'm just going to take this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. And that's good. Now we'll move over and start working on the side. I think bark's probably going to go flying everywhere here, so I put you where I think you won't get hit, I hope. I'm going to be over here where I probably will get hit, but likely we'll live through it. Still at 640 RPM, this time with a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. It's, it's so hard to get the tool in here because of these this big wing here sticking out. I'm not quite sure of a shape here. I know what I have in mind, but and I do like that bark. So if I can keep 
at least some of that on there, I'll, I'll be happy. I just can't get my tool rest close enough to blend this inside corner without getting my hand hit by this nasty part here. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should come back over here where I was. That's pretty good. Nerve-wracking. Starting to look like an ice cream sundae dish or something. That's not quite what I had in mind, but I guess it might work. Maybe I can get in there with a hollowing tool or something. What about this little guy? I've never used this before, I don't think. It's a little detail tool. Ooh, that's a sharp little devil. And I know you can't see it, and I'm sorry about that. You just can't stand here where I'm standing. Well, now I have clearance, but I don't know if I can make the cut that I need to make with that tool. That's about as far in as I need to go, but now it's left a ridge on this part. Sorry for all the monkeying around. And can you see? You can see, yeah, you can see that ridge. I gotta get rid of that ridge somehow. Okay, well, we'll go back to working on the top part. Half inch bowl gouge, just kind of doing a sheer scrape, I hope. Yeah, that's got it pretty good. The problem is getting this side smooth without screwing up this side and then getting this side smooth without screwing up that side and I can only get in here a little bit and then I have to move the tool rest over this way so that I can come this way. It's just, it's just hard. I've got it pretty good. It's not great. It's pretty good and of course I have to change the shape of this. I'm just trying to get this part done before I start working up this way. But you gotta love this bark right here, oh my. Well, I've been standing here looking at this and I think I made a mistake. I hope it's not a really big mistake. I made this pretty thin down here, which is fine. That's what I had in mind, except that I forgot this is end grain and it's not strong. And when I start hollowing out the inside, I'm afraid that might break off. I sure hope not. That'll just ruin it, won't it? So now I've got a half inch standard grind bowl gouge and I'm going to approach from this way and round this piece up. I've installed a six inch tool rest so that I can get in here a little bit tighter. And we're gonna be turning at a thousand RPM, mask and face shield on.
And well, I think that I think that's what I had in mind. It's not the cleanest cut, but it just doesn't want to cut cleanly. So we're going to rely on sanding, and I'm not sure how we're going to do the sanding, but we'll figure it out. Time for sanding. We're going to be using various methods to sand this. There's so many different places. The bark inside here, the bottom. It's just a lot to uh, consider on how I'm going to sand it. I've narrowed it down pretty much, but there there may be other things. First of all, let's talk Sandoflex for a minute. You know, I probably ought to be a distributor for these guys. I get nothing when I talk about Sandoflex. I get nothing from anybody, period. Nobody gives me anything. Everything I have, I bought myself, or my darling wife bought for me. So when I talk about these name brands, the finishes that I use and whatnot, I'm just telling you what I use. I, that's the only reason I tell you about it. And people do ask me quite a bit. And they ask a lot about Sandoflex. These have been around a long time. I, I, I used to work in a hardware store back in the late 70s, early 80s. And I sold these. That was my first time ever having seen them. And they looked like this one. They were green at the time. Uh, then they went to this silver color. And now they're plastic. You can't get the metal ones anymore. Now they're plastic. But you know what? I was just holding the two together here. I'd say this one weighs three times more than this does. This is just really light. And it works exactly the same way. If uh, I wish I had 10 of these, I have, I don't know, 15 of these. Uh, I, and I bought this one just so that I could see what it was like. And most of these, all but one, all but that one right there, I bought this one back when I worked at that hardware store. All the rest of them came from eBay. There are retailers online that sell these. Supergrit.com is what I have found to have the best selection and the best pricing. You can get, you can still get all of them on, e on uh, eBay, but the people on there seem to think they're collector's items or something. Like this is, I'm not real sure, around $40 I think maybe a little less it was less for quite a while there it might be up around 40 might be less than that on on ebay you'll see them for 70 bucks 80 bucks 90 bucks it's the same one it's exactly the same one and then these refills from uh, supergrit.com are i think they're around ten dollars 10 50 something like that for the refill on ebay you'll see them for 19.95, 24.95. It's just insane. It's fine to buy them from eBay, but watch those prices. Don't pay. Don't pay those prices. And the reason I have so many of these is because I I've been buying them for years, like 10 years, and I set up a search and I'm alerted every time somebody lists a new one. I don't do it anymore cuz I have plenty. But every time somebody lists a new one, and once in a while you'll find one for 15 bucks or something and I uh, buy it now. And I buy it now because you're just not going to beat the price. And sometimes there'll be a whole set, sometimes it'll be brand new in the box with extra refills and accessories and stuff for 20 bucks. I mean, you get, you got to get on that stuff. And now I have all mine, so I don't care. Go ahead and get a good deal. I'm not competing with you anymore. I've never ever used this one. Like I said, I bought it just to see what it was like. And boy, is it light. And I'm going to go ahead and use it today. Very first time. I've had it for probably three years, maybe four years. And I'm going to use this to get into that groove. And another advantage to this, having never used it, I'm, I'm assuming it's an advantage, is it won't scratch this wood with these metal ones if you get them too close and that edge hits it'll put a little mark on there if you push too hard it'll put a groove in there so you have to be careful with the metal ones I am careful I've learned my lesson I think maybe this plastic one won't do that and I'm gonna go ahead and use this plastic one right now to, with 80 grit that's what this happens to be is 80 grit and that's what I want to use in here and then I'll then I'll have to go to my metal ones because uh, like I say that's the only plastic one I have and I'm not going to change grits every time okay so that covers that part and, and then I'll sand all of the bark with 180 grit that's this one and then I'll switch to my two inch disc sander I'm going to sand the bottom with it and I'm going to sand the ball with it as far over here as I can get and over here and also here I'll do I'll do the best I can but I think the sandal flexes are gonna do most of the sanding on this it might even require me to get my fingers in here with some sandpaper I'm not sure 
But anyway, as soon as I get my mask on, I'll show you the sandal flex and the two inch disc sander. With the lathe spinning in reverse at about 350. And now I'm on the other side, so I'm spinning forward at 350. Well, I'll tell you what, that is so light. I don't think that weighs a half a pound. And I'm sure the other ones weigh two, two and a half pounds. So that's pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Boy, I wish I had a ton of those. Okay, now with the lathe spinning in reverse at 350 still. Like I say, maybe some hand sanding in there. But I'm going to get it sanded and it's going to be gorgeous. And then we're going to put some sanding sealer on here. And that's when I'll bring you back. See you in a bit. Well, that was certainly a pain, the sanding. Holy smokes. <laughs> it was awful. I'm so glad it's done. And then to think that this thing might just split in half because I went too thin in the center section there, that doesn't help any. And I did a lot of this sanding with strip sandpaper. It's going to take at least two coats of this sanding sealer because, uh, it's just, it, I don't want to say punky wood, but it's just soft. For walnut, it's just soft. I'm trying to come up with a reason for that, and I don't know what it is. Just super dry, maybe, I guess. I don't know. So now I've got some sanding sealer in this little can and my little acid brush. And I'll brush all of the bark and all of these other places that I can't quite get with a rag. See how that soaks it up? It's like I didn't even... Not even putting it on there like. So I'll work at this. I'll buff between coats with the uh, scotch Bright pads and I'll bring you back when it's time to start working on the inside. I think we're probably going to drill it out. That'll relieve a lot of the stress on the piece. So I'm trying not to break it in half. But there'll be lots of turning as well. So I'll see you back then. I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. I've got a two and three eighths inch Forstner bit here. So with the lathe spinning forward at 350 RPM. Looks like this is going to take a little while, so I'll bring you back here in a bit when I get that done and we'll start turning on it. Well, I wish it wasn't so, but this piece has a wobble to it. Quite a wobble. Well, it's maybe it's not as bad as it looks. Maybe it's an eighth of an inch or so over here. That's going to cause a problem with unevenness at the top here. I plan to work on this top and thin it down as well as thinning down the inside. And I'm hoping that will hide this wobble. I don't know. I'm going to use a half inch standard grind bowl gouge to do that, this top part. And then I'm probably going to switch to carbide uh, hollowing tools to work on the inside. I'm going to get my mask and face shield on. Let's see what are we going to be turning at here. It's pretty out of balance as you can see. And it gets pretty bad right there at about 750. But if I go past it, and get up here to about a thousand, uh, it evens out some. So that's where we're going to be. A thousand RPM, half inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on.
Okay. I think that's got it. I've been scraping my way down as I go, and I've just finished up the bottom in that bottom corner, and I think we're done. Time for sanding. By the way, the lathe is spinning forward at 350, and my drill is spinning forward as well. And I'm starting at 80 grit, working up through 400. Sand a bit. Sanding was pretty easy, and that's a good thing. Now I didn't put uh, shellac on the outside yet. I figured I would do that when I do the inside. So the outside only has two coats of uh, sanding sealer on it. Or three coats, three coats of sanding sealer. And that's probably what I'll do on the inside here. And now I'm just gonna take this little can with some sanding sealer in it, and my little brush, and brush it into that bark on the inside here. So I'll bring you back here in a little bit when it's time to take that tenon off. See you in a bit. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm going to slip the bowl over that. Bowl? I guess it's a bowl. I don't know. Bring up my tailstock. I still have the center hole there for reference. So I'm going to use that to line the piece up and try and ensure that it's centered. Bring up my tool rest. Spin the piece up and see if it Seems to be hitting my thumbnail over here equally all the way around. And it's pretty darn close. So we'll go with that. I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and begin removing that tenon at 600 RPM. I need to check for clearance. Oh yeah, we have good clearance. So I, I like to leave this little area, this little button raised up here a little bit when I can, and I can, so I will. And that's pretty small, so now I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch sweat back ball gouge. And I'm also going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM, just keeping it controllable. Now I'm going to turn the speed down to 200 RPM. Pressure towards the headstock, right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, and when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Like that. Now I can just take this over here to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Well, here it is, one walnut, Boy, you know, I make a lot of things I don't know what to call them. I don't know what this is. Uh, is it a bowl? Kind of looks like a bowl. That way. I don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> one walnut emerging bowl? I don't know if it's really emerging. Doesn't look too emerging to me. I'll tell you what, this piece gave me a hard time. Just all the way around. Just everything about it. There's uh, some little bit of light coming through in this bark inclusion here. That's okay. There's the bottom all finished up. I think it looks pretty cool. I just, I don't know what to call it. You tell me. What do you call this? What is this thing? Tell me if you like it. Thank you, Tuffy Marginas, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly, I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there 
near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. If you'd share this video, I'd really appreciate it. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.